Hello comrades, it's me, an enigma wrapped in a blanket, and welcome back to Foundation and to our lovely coastal town. Last time we finally set up our wheat production and ensured we're not going to starve, and now it's time to expand our town. I've set my eyes on this beautiful hill over here, but rather than just building willy-nilly, I figured I'd make this expansion a slightly more planned project. So what I had in mind was to use the natural geography of the region to emulate something at least vaguely resembling historical towns, and with what we've got here, I thought we could do a three-tiered setup. The top tier will be the Lord's Castle, then followed by church and middle class housing, and then the bottom tier can be the craftsmen's houses and the lower classes still safely residing behind at least a tiny wall. So that's the basic idea. Now let's see if we can make that work. Also, before we get started, I finally got to rearranging my playlist for Foundation, so if you're interested in the construction of this entire village slash town, I'm popping that playlist up in the top right corner and the description. There's also the playlist for my uh, previous town. Those were the first ever videos I made, so the quality is... <laughs> it's, it's a bit, you know, touch and go. So if you're interested, you can check out the playlist for this entire village. I still haven't named it. So I'm just calling the playlist Coastal Village, but if I come up with a good name for it, then maybe we'll change the title. All right, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is outline the thing in walls, just so that we have some kind of basic idea of where each level is and how it's going to look. I'm going to do different walls based on the levels. So the mid level is going to have this nice and almost decorative tavern wall. And then the top and the lower are going to have the more functional stone walls. The two illustrations I popped up earlier didn't really feature walls, and that's because most historical towns weren't actually big or relevant enough to have them. A town the size of ours probably wouldn't have one either. Walls were an extremely expensive thing to build and maintain, so if you just had a small town, you might have a fence or just use natural terrain and watchtowers to keep safe. The main purpose wasn't to defend against armies, but to monitor access to town and to catch anyone sneaking in supplies or trade goods without a permit. Most towns wouldn't see battle inside of the town itself. Local lords fighting for control of territory for more wealth don't really have a lot of use for a ruined town. So aside from natural disasters, foreign invasions were really the only reason for towns getting destroyed, and for the most part, towns didn't have to worry about those. That's why historically, sieging major and defended cities was such a big deal. Once a city fell, the surrounding towns didn't really have the infrastructure needed to defend themselves, and were easily conquered. This is actually something you see in Paradox games with the fort system like in Europa Universalis or Imperator Rome, which is annoying, but it's also more accurate to the comparatively simpler system in Crusader Kings. Okay, so those are the three basic outlines of these tiers, and now we can go into planning. But before we actually go into planning the buildings, I did want to add a lumber camp, just so that we have a little bit more clearing getting done before um, you know we start building. And I'm also gonna add an extra warehouse, and we're gonna add it, because I'm thinking it might be more of a temporary warehouse, we're just gonna add it over here in the corner. We're going to hope that it doesn't upset too many people. And this is just going to be for wood storage. Uh, and because our army is all fully healed, we can um, go on another mission. And let's go on a difficult mission. We're going to assign these people. Good luck! Alright, so the first thing that we're going to plan is the church, because that's going to be the biggest part. So let's just kind of put a church together. And I was thinking something like a classic cross shape. But with a little bit of a twist. So what we're going to add is something like that. So 
So the back of the church looks pretty busy and the front looks quite empty, but that's only a temporary thing uh, because I do want to decorate with some gardens or something in the front or just have uh, people living there. Right now, I'm being pretty conservative with the promotions, just making sure I don't over-promote and accidentally run out of food or clothes. So because this is on a hill, it is quite difficult to make it look good and be this long. But we're gonna see, we're gonna see if we can make it work. Alternatively, we could just have a more square situation going on. And, you know, not have this front. So a kind of chantry situation that's more square it might be the only thing that we're able to pull off. Alternatively, we could do something more like this. Um, and it's going to be a little bit of a chunkier church. It's still pretty massive. It can take 105 people and it will basically drain all of our money if we build it like this. Um, but I do like the idea of having a long church. The problem is that because this is a hill, um, having like a fully long church might not actually be feasible. Now we could also have something a little bit tinier like this. So, we could have like a tiny church that just kind of looks like this. And that would leave some room behind it for maybe a garden or for more people's houses. I actually don't hate this. Aside from the like double roof beams in the middle, I think it looks pretty good. I don't think I've ever made a church with the red or blue themes. I always just go for the stone. Should definitely fix that in the future. Okay, so I think this is going to be the church, and um, this is where it's going to have kind of its little church garden over here in the back, possibly. And before we press build, I would like to plan the other buildings as well, so let's go ahead and add some other stuff. First off, I think this place also needs a tavern, so let's just add a little tavern here. This isn't going to be anything as fancy as the church, but I would like to have a little bit of a nice situation going on and we're gonna place it right here where we have the woodcutter now and I think it's gonna work let's take a look it's again a little bit tricky because it's on this big slope here but I think we can make it work I don't know maybe the skylights do make it better there's a difference between good and a lot but <laughs> I don't know that difference, so this is fine. <laughs> Alright, so here we have our tavern, which I think works. I don't know, we'll have to see it in action and we might adjust the wall a little bit to make it look a little bit better. But I think it kind of works here on the edge. It's a, it's like a, it's like a very special type of tavern. It's not your everyday tavern. Oh, right. And I almost forgot, we also have to add the gateways from the tavern, so that the tavern walls have little gateways. Yeah, I think that works. Alright, so now, let's do the market. Now, here's the problem that I'm having. I have two options with the market. I could make it down here, where it's like, you know, commoners market, or we could have a market inside, which I think also makes sense because you have kind of like the upper class people and they should have their own market. It's just that these, these market stalls really 
don't scream upper class. So I'm not really sure how we're gonna pull that one off, but let's just try. So I'm thinking it needs to be a pretty wide thing because up here the market should definitely have like a little fountain in the middle, I feel. At this point, my frame rate is already taking quite a hit because there's just so many blueprints with the church, the tavern, and each individual market piece. So I'm just gonna set the upper market to build and keep the game paused so that we can watch them all be built in one go in a time lapse, but they won't be eating up our frame rate. As soon as I click build, my FPS jumps up by almost 20, and it's such a relief. I'm not an FPS snob, but playing it under 10 frames per second is really a bit of a struggle, especially if you're trying to be precise with how you place stuff. Okay, so I was thinking something like this, and you may be thinking, Lulling, that's too many markets. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I just really like this idea of both the upper and the lower quarters having their own markets. In real life, rich people didn't really have to go to the markets themselves. Stuff would either be delivered to their homes or they'd send servants down to get it for them. The middling classes, which generally only appeared later and represented the richest of society aside from the nobles, and would later supplant the nobles in both wealth and eventually power, and are still the ruling class today, would visit stores, but these were also fancy buildings, where bespoke fine goods would be crafted, usually made to order, rather than street markets with stalls. I also don't have to necessarily build all the stalls just yet, and can just leave the tents empty until there's a need for something, and at the very least it means I'll never be in a situation where I'll need to squeeze in a new stall into an existing crowded town. Alright, so that's the second market being built. And then all that's left right now is the castle, so let's take a look at what we plan to do with that. So what I had in mind was using the stone set from the Lord Manor to kind of emulate the feel of a castle. We're not really going to be able to construct a proper castle, but I think we're going to be able to capture the essence of a castle, or like, the mood of a castle. I feel like often the first go-to for a castle is like a traditional, iconographic, symmetrical, square castle. Two or four towers, gate in the middle, pointy roofs with a little flag on top, all that jazz. There are definitely some castles that look very reminiscent of that, like Bodium Castle or Harlech Castle, both of which have a very square and symmetrical design, and the square keep was definitely a thing, so this isn't a historical. But there's also some really cool castles out there which work with their geography rather than shape it. Since we can't shape the terrain in Foundation, I'm gonna be inspired by those with irregular shapes and very little symmetry. Another limitation is that using the mansion pieces to make walls, it's really easy to get repetitive quickly. I really like this lithography of Grand Kamen, the ruins of which are actually just a couple minutes away from where I live, where you can see that the castle itself is full of tiny, irregular features, just sticking out of the walls. I'm gonna try to emulate that look so that I break up the monotony of using the same pieces. I don't think I'm going to make the full castle in one go. First, I just want to make a little proof of concept rather than a full-sized castle spanning the entire size of this hilltop. I just want to see how the shapes and colors will work with the environment and if building a fully-sized castle would even make sense. Plus, I really like the idea of a castle growing over time as the town gets bigger. So if it ends up looking great, we'll be expanding the castle in a future video. I had to kick off the construction of the tavern just because the frame rate was getting low again. The game is still paused so nobody's gonna build it until we're ready, but it does mean the preview is gone. It's a sacrifice worth taking though, makes it a lot easier to focus on the castle design. Give me those sweet, sweet frames per second. All right, we are ready to build. Let's just set start construction here and start construction here.
Before we start building, I just want to paint the residential area. Now, we don't really have any people needing homes, and since the winter update made it so that people want to live close to where they work, I'm not expecting a lot of people to move in. So we're sadly not going to have a really cool town growing situation going on during the construction time lapse. But we'll just paint this just so they have the option. My biggest concern at this point is how our builders are going to make the roads. I don't want them to make this web of roads preventing them from building residential houses. So let's hope they don't cause too much chaos in trying to get to their destinations. Alright, I think we're just about ready to let them build. I think it's time. We should pause the game and we'll assign a billion builders. We'll basically assign all our unemployed people to become builders. So let's assign all the builders. And I think I've unpaused all the construction. So as soon as we press play, we should be seeing everybody just swarming these buildings, making stupid roads and just ruining my life forever. Let's destroy this lumber camp as well. All right, so we've got a billion builders now. Without further ado, let us begin. This is going to look pretty empty when it's finished, so I think after the monuments are done, we'll fill it in a bit with various houses before wrapping up. I do still want to make more time lapses that also include the building of houses around the monument, giving it a more organic feel as the town grows, but for that I think I'll have to strategically place workplaces and assign them and then edit around that so that in the time lapse it just feels like people are organically moving in. I didn't do that for this part because I didn't want to place workplaces until I see roads take their final form so that I can minimize road creep. I also think I'm going to wait with fine tuning and decorations until after everyone's moved in, otherwise we run the risk of obstructing potential residential locations with decorations. I really like how our, quote, castle, unquote, is turning out. The little corner works really well, I think, so we'll definitely be expanding on that in the future. The little extra bit on the left of the castle leaves a bit to be desired, but I think with some effort and bold design choices, we can make it work. I think out of everything, the church is probably my favorite. For a moment I thought the steeple might be too high, but it looks really cool and I think the size is perfect. Could even be a little higher if we want to get really extravagant. I like how it stands out as a sort of complement and contrast to the castle, and the shape is very churchy. That long design I was doing at the start would probably look bulky and take up way too much space. And we're finished! Look at all those people going to church! Oh, and of course they're going in by the back entrance for some reason. Amazing. I also don't hate the roads that we ended up with. The one going through the cliff looks a bit awkward, but other than that, there's not too many of them and they don't weave too much. And they look nice. 
Okay, so we could wrap up here, but I think we could actually still spruce this area up a bit by, you know, adding some actual people to it. Also, all these new massive buildings are going to be a huge strain on our economy. I remember last time I made a giant church, which was in our previous town, it took several videos to get out of the economic crisis the church's upkeep caused. So in order to make it more than just a pretty looking shell, let's move some people in, start some production, and make sure that this fancy expansion to our town is actually making some money. First, let's make sure our markets are assigned and worked in, which should also give us our first citizens in the new area. We can also unassign most of our builders, since we don't really need them anymore. Our finances are already scraping zeros, so a lot of this was just waiting for the money to roll in to build stuff, so I'll be skipping a lot of the construction. A little editor's note here, it did take us a couple in-game hours to get out of this crisis. So I think it's a good thing to skip it, so that the Let's Play videos can have more stuff happening rather than just waiting for two minutes to build a bakery because the gold refuses to go above 100. However, because I'll be time skipping, I don't want to build any additional raw material production like farms or shepherds or add anything new that we don't produce yet because that would in essence expand the town and I feel like that should be in the normal videos rather than in a time skip. For now, I'm just going to add secondary production stuff, so things like weavers, tailors, and bakers, which are things we already have in our town anyway. We were already producing an excess of wool, cloth, and flour before, so we can safely add more of these without upsetting the balance too much. I'm also only making buildings that don't have a negative area of effect and desirability. Inside of the walls, we only want residential buildings and essentially various craftsmen's houses. The farming and production of raw materials should happen outside of the walls. Another editor's note, I'm using new editing software and boy does it not like speed ups. I'm having a really hard time previewing what these rapidly switching clips will look like in the final product, so I hope it ends up looking okay. <laughs> if you have any notes for what you liked or didn't like in terms of editing and composition of this video, let me know in the comments. That's what they're there for, I guess. And of course, we must not forget the statue of the sacred sheep. One thing that I didn't get to do that I was thinking about doing was adding a new mansion here as well. Not like this one that's pretending it's a castle, but like a proper mansion with the dark look that that one has over there. But. I thought that over here would be a really cool place because it kind of gives you an overview of your entire realm. You know, if you're the Lord, you, you've got like this here, but then you've also got, you can turn that way and you've got all the land that you will one day rule. And I thought that would just be a really cool angle to, to look at and to kind of have an overview of the town. And I think this is a really cool angle anyway. Now with the like castle and then the church. I think it just looks really cool and it really works. Alright, I think that's gonna be it for now. We've added a ton of new stuff in this new section of town and I think it looks pretty great. Uh, it's still friendly and approachable, but it also has uh, more of a walled city vibe and I really like it. And in the next video, we're going to be expanding inside of this. We're going to be decorating. We're going to be seeing how things finalize because I don't want to do too many decorations before all the houses are down. And we're also probably going to start production on beer and we're going to clear out the back area so that we can have a whole thing. And we're going to also add our very first citizens. And after that, if everything goes to plan, we'll be starting some really difficult military missions and start bringing home the good stuff. And by the good stuff, I mean blueprints. And then we can start building some other really cool structures. But for now, that's gonna be it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to do all the things you do when you've enjoyed the video. I'm also popping up some stuff on screen that you can check out if you're interested. I mostly play city building and colony management games, and I'm also putting up the new playlist for this town so you can check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Goodbye!